Hey guys, what's up? So, we are talking about anemia. So, please go ahead and watch previous videos in the playlist first. Today, we'll talk about iron studies. But first, to understand iron studies, we need to understand iron absorption. By iron studies, I mean things like serum iron, TIBC, ferritin, Percent saturation. Iron studies is one of the most confusing topics. I'd like to make it easy. You have to know that, except for epithelial shedding and menstruation, the body has no method to get rid of iron. Okay? So, iron absorption is heavily regulated. Now, let's get to the nitty gritty. Iron absorption. This is heavy stuff. I'll do my best to make it simple. But let's get the short story first. Iron has two sources. Either you eat it and die it, or you destroy your elderly or senescent RBCs. RBCs, hemoglobin, heme and globin. Heme has iron and protoporphin. So I have iron. But for now, let's talk about the one we get in diet. Iron in the stomach. That's a big deal. Let's zoom in. In the stomach, we have hydrochloric acid that will transform iron from the ferric to the ferrous. Okay, two positive. Ferrous instead of ferric thanks to hydrochloric acid and also vitamin C, okay? So we end up with the ferrous iron. That's fine. So what will happen to this ferrous iron? It will go into the duodenum, pass through the enterocytes, the cells that line the duodenum from inside to the bloodstream. And in the bloodstream, it will bind to transferrin, the carrier protein for iron. That's the short story. There is a very long story that we'll discuss now. But first, I'd like you to know something. There are two types of iron. The ferrous 2 plus is called the heme iron. The ferric 3 plus is the non-heme iron iron remember when we have talked about the red blood cells they have hemoglobin and the hemoglobin carries what oxygen this hemoglobin hemoglobin has iron fe2 plus this is the ferrous okay there is a mnemonic to remember that fe2 carries o2 fe2 carries o2 the ferrous state, the heme in the hemoglobin carries the oxygen. Fe2 carries O2. And we have said that in the small bowel, the duodenum, which one is absorbed to the small bowel? It's the ferrous, Fe2. There is a mnemonic for that. Fe2 goes into the enterocyte. So, mnemonic number one, Fe2 binds O2. Mnemonic number two, Fe2 goes into the duodenum to get absorbed. This is so cool. Now let's focus on the duodenum, then we'll focus on the blood vessel, then we'll see the fate of iron on the transferrin. But now, let's talk about the enterocytes. So, we have the ferrous. Only the Fe2 can go into the duodenum, the enterocyte. So, iron, the ferrous state, can go inside the enterocyte by two channels. Either the heme carrier protein 1 or the divalent metal transporter 1 or DMT 1. Okay, no matter which channel the fate is kind of the same. The iron, the ferrous iron, can choose 
to get stored as mucosal ferritin in the cytoplasm of the enterocyte and then get shed okay with the normal epithelial regenerative shedding okay to the stool iron will be lost to the stool in the this method okay by the way that's why cancer of the small bowel is rare because i'm constantly regenerating them the cell will not be staying still for a long time so there is less risk of mutation because when the cell stays for a long time there is increased risk of mutation but that's a completely different subject let's go back to iron so first method to be stored as mucosal ferritin and get shed in the stool the other method is to go through the door the porta porta means door ferro iron porta door in protein the protein that acts as a door for iron ferro portin this ferrous get outside of the enterocyte gets converted to the ferric by some compounds okay then we have ended up with the ferric this ferric will goes in the blood vessel okay and iron cannot be left free it's dangerous why due to the fenton reaction the fenton reaction so it has to be bound to something what's that a plasma protein called transferrin in means protein fer iron trans for transportation a protein for transportation of iron that makes sense this ferric on the transferrin has two fates either to go to the bone marrow to the erythroid precursors to help form new rbc's as we have said before in our video about hematopoiesis or it can go to the liver as ferric stimulate a protein called hepcidin this is a regulator an inhibitor when it senses that there is a lot of iron coming in so let's decrease the absorption of iron hepcidin is a regulator an inhibitor and it does that by two mechanisms either to go to the door the ferroportin tell this gate to shut close please i don't want more iron or go to the macrophage that store iron and tell please macrophage dear macrophage do not release iron that's so cool so in brief what's happening here i have iron in the which state the ferrous state and this iron in the ferrous state will go inside the enterocytes by two channels when it comes in it has two options either to be stored at mucosal ferritin and get shed in the stool or go through the door called ferroportin when it goes to the ferroportin get converted to the ferric bound to transferrin and then goes either to the bone marrow erythroid precursors form new rbc's hematopoiesis or go to the liver stimulate the hepcidin which will inhibit further absorption of iron either by shutting the door or inhibiting the macrophage from releasing iron that is cool but what is the fenton reaction the fenton reaction chemistry when iron is left free it's dangerous it generates free radicals which damages tissue so the mnemonic is if fe is left free by the fenton reaction give this hydroxyl free radical it's called the fenton reaction and the hydroxyl free radicals are freaking bad i call this the f mnemonic let's focus more about the hepcidin and the regulation of iron absorption so we have said that when we have a lot of iron coming in on the transferrin, hepcidin gets stimulated and upregulated, i.e. the liver form more hepcidin to stop iron absorption in the duodenum and to stop iron release from the macrophage. That makes sense. Okay, the opposite is also true. When iron on the transferrin is less, hepcidin is downregulated, less hepcidin is formed. So, there is increased iron absorption and increased iron release because there is no inhibitor 
I'm free to absorb and release more iron. So the iron serum increases. The serum iron increases. That's it. We have said before that iron, okay, gets absorbed where? In the duodenum, enterocyte. It has a sensor. Sensor. Why? Because the absorption of new iron depends on the total previous iron storage in the body. It's heavily regulated. It has a sensor to sense the transferring carrying iron. The HFE gene helps this enterocyte gets activated and absorb iron in the ferrous state. Remember, when hepcidin prevents more iron from getting absorbed, there is only one way for iron to get shed with the enterocyte in the stool. Because iron, remember as we said, has two fates, either to go at mucosal ferritin or to go up and through the ferroportin and simulate hepcidin. If hepcidin shuts the gate, I have only one option to be stored as ferritin and get shed in the stool. That's it for iron. Next time we'll get some details about the iron studies. But for now, you have to subscribe to get new videos as they come. Thank you very much for your support and see you in the next video.